403. Just left Hamilton, Ontario, where I got loaded. And I need to reach, uh, you know, at least cross the border, maybe uh, reach Indiana today because my permits are, you know, they only have so many days that they can be used, right? Because this is an oversized load. Actually, it does not look too bad. It's basically kind of like a, kind of like a robot. Looks like a big cart. Uh, it's only four feet uh, tall, but it uh, weighs about 60,000 pounds. I don't think it's 65. It's uh, 55 for the machine and 3,000 for the batteries. So it's uh, under 60,000. But it feels heavy. And they wanted me to top it because it's, uh, you know, it's, it works inside all the time. It basically moves uh, big pieces. It can take up to 120,000 pounds. And it's fully automatic, no driver. And it just follows basically the kind of like the laser uh, guiding lines on the floor. You know, it's a cool, very cool machine. And they loaded with a crane. But uh, it took me a while to get there. Well, at first yesterday, right, uh, Thursday, uh, the cat replaced my uh, alternator. And just as they said, it, it was uh, 600 bucks Canadian, which is probably like 550 US now. One hour labor, which is not too bad, and then uh, the price of the alternator. But what I, what the funny thing is that I, I didn't have any noise coming from my belts or the pulley before. Now they, they put in the new alternator. I start driving and at slow speeds, I, I hear this whistling, you know, like when uh, your, your belts go bad or your, or your pulley, beep, 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 you know, ch -ch -ch -ch. like very irritating. You cannot hear it at highway speeds, but when you're driving uh, in town, you know, like... 40, 45 miles per hour is very irritating, so now I'll have to check that. But at least my truck pulls like crazy now. They did the uh, valve adjustment. Uh, they did not find any leaks in the air-to-air, -air, in the turbo, in the charger cooler, but they did find uh, some valves, uh, intake and exhaust that were out of adjustment. So my truck uh, feels like it has much more horsepower now. That's probably why I was burning too much fuel on my last trip because the truck did not develop full power. And that's why it burned uh, fuel to create, to compensate for that. And I went to the hotel, spent the night in the hotel in Cambridge. And woke up at six o'clock, started driving, and right like two kilometers after I, I joined the 401 East, I hit a huge jam like 20 kilometers long so because of that I was late basically uh, a truck spinned out it was uh, slippery with like minus 1 30 Fahrenheit and the truck spinned out and hit the barrier and one lane was blocked and it was like nightmare especially during rush hour right in the morning and anyway I, I come to the ship around 8:30. They told me to be there at 8, so I'm there at 8.30. Uh, I took my keys, I locked the doors, and I go inside the office to ask them uh, where they're going to load me, you know. And the guy says, oh, just you missed, there's a driveway, just uh, turn around, go back, there's another building where the shipping office is. And I, I'm coming back to my truck, and I grab my keys from my belt, and something feels not right. Those keys are very light. And I look at them. Turns out when I left the truck, I just grabbed the, the ignition key, but the door key was on the ring. I left it in this pocket at the dashboard. And my doors are locked. The ignition key only works in the ignition lock, because now I have two keys, right? One for the door, one for the ignition. Jesus. And my phone is inside. My cell phone is inside, so I'm thinking, okay, so what do I do now? I go back to the office and ask the, their permission to call a local uh, locksmith. That's another 100 bucks, 80 bucks. Screw this. So I started, uh, I tried to pry open my, uh, my window. And after like half an hour, I got like this, uh, maybe like three quarters of an inch. 
get it open just by using different tools. And then I took a bungee cord and I played with a, with a hook, with a metal hook and uh, bent it a little bit. And I was able to uh, push in the bungee cord and lift the, the knob. Unbelievable. But I did waste maybe another, another half an hour. And another problem I ran into in the morning before going to the ship was uh, I checked my airbags on the trailer and they were all empty. Because I forgot to check them at the, at the parking lot, so it turns out that the trailer was sitting, you know, outside for two weeks, and the airlines froze again, and so I had to play with my brake fluid again, and uh, just release and apply brakes on the trailer, you know, like uh, four or five times, until finally the airbags inflated, it just... And this happens every time, you know, every time you go for a vacation, when you come back uh, in winter, it's very difficult to get back uh, for the truck and for the driver, you know, like, because you kind of relax and you think, ah, no big deal. And then uh, the truck starts punishing you, you know, because it's been sitting in cold temperatures. Like, uh, I remember when I worked for McKinnon, I came back uh, after vacation and, and it was only minus 11 Celsius. The truck couldn't, uh, didn't want to start. Then finally it started, and I started driving empty with the drive and trailer, and it just died on the freeway two, two kilometers, one mile down the road. I had to call a tow truck. <laughs> Basically, I think uh, fuel gelled up. So, and my uh, battery charger, the battery charge shows. Uh, and it goes up and down uh, between 14.9. Now it's 13.2, uh, so I hope it's not going to burn my battery. But the guy, the cat said, uh, yeah, it's going to be high initially. Uh, maybe I have a bad battery, you know, because of that high voltage. Maybe it killed the battery. But right now it's it's normal. At least it's in the green area, you know, on the on the gauge. my cooling system. Beautiful. See, before it was always uh, 170 or less. And my battery charger, you see, is uh, less than 14 volts, which is good. about one hour away from the border, from the U.S. border in Detroit, Michigan. All right, I stopped at the rest area, Encore, in Canada here. Just needed to go to the bathroom and uh, I have my own tea, right? So I know Tim Hortons, they don't like uh, selling, giving you for free, like, uh, you know, cups with hot water, but over here I said, how much? How much do you want for for extra large cup with hot water? Oh, look at this. See how how full it is? I remember one place, I think it was a McDonald's. Uh, I asked them for the same thing and the guy says, we can only give you half of the cup. I say, why is that? Like half of the cup of hot water. He says, otherwise we have to charge you as if it's uh, coffee or tea. See, this is, this is my favorite uh, tea. Uh, Uncle, Uncle Lee's tea and it's organic. I buy it at uh, Walmart. Of course, sometimes it's just Jesus. One of those bags where you cannot. There's no tear on it, so it's impossible to open it unless you want to take a gun and shoot a hole in it, or you take a big knife like this, pirate knife. Someone screwed up, someone didn't put that little, uh, you know, tear. Alright, so now I got T, and I'm about, what, 60 kilometers or 40 miles from the border with the US, and it's already getting dark. And today I gotta keep trucking, probably till 9 o'clock. 
because of course I have to stop for 10 hours right in the in the States uh, so that I have a, a time in the morning and usually the way I figure is I like to start early let's say I want to be at 7 o'clock I already want to drive so which means that I have to st start get up at let's say 6 30 6 15 and then you know go to the truck stop washroom tea coffee and if I want to start driving at 7 and if we look at that obligatory 10 hours that means that I can drive till 9 because yeah the, the longer I drive if I drive till 10 then I can only start driving at 8 in the morning which is not good actually wait a second I'm going towards Chicago so I'm gonna be gaining hours no let's not complicate things so yeah I can drive till 9 and now it's only what 442 Eastern time so basically 18 minutes to 5 so I should be at the border probably like 515 520 and then I just have three hours to go and I'm gonna stop at the TA in Ann Arbor which is uh, what uh, probably 40 miles 60 kilometers west of Detroit because I need to get fuel and then whatever's left after that probably I think I'll probably reach uh, Battle Creek Battle Creek uh, Michigan Jesus I wanted to go to Chicago or maybe even uh, Iowa no Morris Illinois there's a TA there but I spent first of all at the jam the jam in the morning then I lost I locked my keys in the truck and then it probably took me like four hours to do everything with this load you know tarping chaining because it's heavy load I had I used like one two one two three four yeah I used eight chains and three straps because the guy couldn't decide how heavy it is like on the paperwork says 65,000 pounds on the machine itself says uh, 55 plus uh, 3,000 pounds for the battery so and here's what I bought you know like what else do you buy like I don't want to buy you know burgers or some stupid stuff you know at least here there's something but a lot of these uh, they have too many chemicals I was just reading a story about this online that yeah you, you gotta be careful with these protein bars because there's too much sugar and too many artificial uh, flavors and artificial uh, I mean different chemicals like this one only has 10 grams of protein but it has 20 grams of carbs which is not exactly an ideal ideal ratio all right so let's rock and roll at least my truck drives okay to no touch wood you know like I like the power the power is back uh, but what I want to do is when I have a chance or extra money I want to fix that noise the belt whistling noise and then what else there was something else something else. oh I think uh, you know my uh, glad hand uh, like the one that's uh, the red one that's connected to the trailer it's not leaking exactly but it's kind of loose where it goes into the trailer so I wanna and I try to tighten myself it keeps spinning and it's kind of hard to reach inside there because you have to hold it with two wrenches I'll just do it at a truck stop somewhere all right let's go oh by the way uh, no more dash cam sorry guys for now I just uh, I get rid of it uh, I'll try to use my uh, Nikon uh, tomorrow see what it uh, see how it looks